completely different. Good afternoon. I'm speaking to you live just outside. Los Angeles. I like to think balding is just God's way of saying, now let's see you get laid. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? What I'd really like to do is put the greatness of this man in perspective. The hail of community has a lot to be thankful for, <laughs> having you as a spokesperson. You mean you just call this guy up? About life and about reality. And now, America's number one sure, you start reality show. radio show for men. Live from Los Angeles, it's Spencer Cobrin's The Bald Truth. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. This is Spencer Coburn's The Bold Truth with Joe Tillman, and I am Joe Tillman. And uh, today, February 3rd, uh, hopefully we've got a great show for you today. I promoted the hell out of it today. Hopefully, hopefully uh, more people will get a um, get notification. And um, thank you for all those that are joining in that are subscribed. I know that about 16% of my viewers, or my subscribers uh, rather, are tuning in at any given time, I'd like to get that number up. So anytime that you are, if you are subscribed, make sure to go into your notification settings, which is the little bell next to the subscribe button or the unsubscribe button, and make sure to ring uh, or to click all notifications for that because I want you guys to see this. I want you guys to come on board and uh, join us for the, the ride today. Um, we'll be talking about it later on, but you saw the title. Um, hairlines or donor, which is more important, and I think it's I think it's a supremely important subject, especially um, <clears throat> excuse me, in light of how the hair transplant industry, the market, if you will, has been evolving over the over the years. And I don't even say evolving; it's more it's more like devolving, because if you're a, um, a, a regular listener on um, uh, Spotify or um, um, Apple or anything like that, where you, you hear us talking about this or you watch the show, you know that we're always talking about it being a de-evolution of the industry overall because of the standards dropping like crazy. So um, I hope you uh, stick around to, to take part in that. And of course, call in, ask your questions, because I, I think it's a really important subject. It's a hugely important subject to me. And um, hopefully some of you will understand that. If you're wondering where Spencer is right now, you can probably hear him in the background. He's doing some of the right uh, here. prep just, work I, I, that I, I he want, normally I does. Want, <clears throat> I want you to practice opening the program. And I think that was very smooth. Thank you. And I am, while you're opening the program, I'm turning on the phones and I'm about to um, embed the link onto the bald truth from your channel. Because that's what you do, man. Well, I just got into the studio. You want, you're like, let's get this done on time. Well, okay, let's start. Let's do it. But you got to open the show. <clears throat> well, that wasn't a condition. You didn't say it was a condition. I just wanted you to be on time for a change. Oh. Ooh. All right, you know what? I'm going to let that one go. I'm going to follow that shit away. Because follow I think away. everyone who's watching understands the bald truth. Well, I think you're right. The fans do anyway. Hopefully there's a lot of, a lot of new people watching that don't understand, but you know what? You will. Subscribe Guys, and hit that like button. Let me give you the phone number. 888 This is the Hair Loss Show. I'm sorry that I'm uh, multitasking while I am uh, speaking to you guys, but that's what I have to do because, because your channel is confusing, Joe. That's what I have to do because I got no one here to help me out. I got no one here producing this broadcast. I have no one here. I don't. I can't look over to Jamie and tell him to put some shit up on the screen. I'm Jamie. I'm You're Jamie guy. and Joe. I'm Jamie, Joe. I'm the camera fucking guy. I'm the sound guy. Let's see if that worked. Speaking of, speaking of sound, I only hear it on my left. My left. Uh... I don't hear my right. And Mr. Rolandis is in the chat room. Welcome back, Mr. Rolandis. I haven't seen you for a while. He was saying the same thing, that it's coming through only on his left headphone. That's interesting. With quite you know, low sound. Let, let me see. Check, 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 check. I see that. I see that coming out of my headset. Why hmm. is that? Let's... Mine's fine. I, I hear myself fine. My, uh, my meters are fine. It's... And Mr. Rolandis said I'm fine. 
Check, 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 check. So I see that coming out of the left side. Let's see what's going on here, fellas. Let me check the main audio. I tell you, man, this, that's, that's why you got to get here early, man. That's why you got to test I'm everything. Let me see what and, happens. Um, trying, trying to do a uh, Hold on. A don't, don't, don't speak. Experiment. Don't speak. Check, 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 check. A pain in the ass. Check, check, check. Why is it coming out of one channel? Maybe one of your tubes exploded. Keep, keep, <laughs> keep talking. I'll be right back. <laughs> this is what we put up with. It's like, okay, we're almost on time. I think we're like, uh, what time did we go live? I think it was maybe one minute late or two minutes late. And we're spending the first 20 minutes <laughs> dealing with <laughs> equipment failures. That's awesome. Anyway, um, of course, while we're here and waiting for Spencer to get his stuff going on, if you got any questions, always feel free to ask them in the chat room. We apparently have some time to review those right now. Um, and again, I, I thank everyone for joining us here. We got a good start to the program today, 35 viewers uh, concurrently watching and uh, going up. Uh, 16 likes. I want to see those likes really high up there today, people. So I really appreciate if you can hit that like button. Of course, only if you like the broadcast. I'm also trying another piece of software. Um, I'm not sure if I finished setting it up, but hopefully um, the first 15 minutes of this is on my Instagram live. I don't think I set it up uh, correctly. I don't, I don't know but, what's going um, on. Let's see. Hold on for a second. Am I coming to both better. channels now? All right, good. Yes, you are. Very good. You know, it's this thing is put together with fucking tape and gum and spit. Dude, I'm telling, like, just, just make the jump. I don't, I don't want to do it unless I know that I'm going to continue to do this thing with you. I'm going to keep this. Oh, old that sounds until, ominous. Until it fucking breaks completely. As long as I can the get it to work. Once called. In they a want while. their gear back. You said who? The Smithsonian? The Smithsonian called. They want their gear back. <laughs> it's so cruel. But it's true, actually. But true. Yeah. Uh, guys, we have open phone lines, so feel free to call in. This is the Hair Loss Show, and we do this live. And you can see what a pain in the ass it is. So call us, 888-659-3727. I know Joe had something interesting he wanted to talk about. I couldn't pay attention at the, you know, the first 10 minutes of the show. Joe, what? What's the show supposed to be about today, besides the usual? Well, it's, it's kind of a continuation of the usual, where we're talking about the, um, the, the dangers of getting a hair transplant without doing proper research, where the, the hairline doesn't look natural. And my problem with that whole approach is that people don't understand. And over the years, when I've, I've made my opinion known, about you know the the supreme importance of hairline naturalness, single hair grafts properly placed in the front, angle, direction, all that good good stuff. Um, I'm usually met with at least a percentage, not 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 in unison, but a percentage of people saying um, I'm I'm either being too picky or or in their opinion um, it's better than nothing. Or shut up, and, old man. Yeah, pretty much. So, shut up, old man. But then you see these same people, and this this is part of my observation on um, on the, the the Facebook group I'm a part of, uh, Hair Loss Conquerors, and then the um, the different Reddit uh, subreddits that are talking about this. And what I'm seeing is that while they may not give two shits about the naturalness of their hairline, if their donor looks even slightly thin then they're fucked right. in their mind. Oh my God, my donor is depleted. Guys, is my donor depleted? What do you think? And usually like these long, these long discussions about, about how the dude has screwed himself or uh, some guys are saying, you know, don't worry. It, it depends on, on the, the case, obviously. But they don't give a shit about the naturalness of their hairline. There are a few holdouts <clears throat> that do understand, and, and God bless them, they, they have, you know, the, um, the aesthetic sense to understand what, 
at least doesn't look natural, and, and they have a fairly good sense of what does look natural. But it blows my mind how people can be so concerned about a little bit of thinning in the donor and not caring about the natural, the, the lack of naturalness in the hairline. And what's hilariously bizarre to me is that the whole reason that FUE exists, the only reason, is because patients want to avoid that strip scar. That's Understandably. Correct. Understandably. <clears throat> but make no mistake, there is zero reason other than avoiding the strip scar that FUE exists today. There's no, there's but they have no problem. zero advantage for the patient. Zero advantage as far as overall aesthetics and the amount of hair that can be moved and the level of accuracy that those follicles can be dissected. There's no advantage to the patient. Zero. And that's and why when, I'm going to repeat myself, Joe, and speak over you. That's why when I mm -hmm. go online, mm -hmm, I was talking first. You there, Joe? What's that? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Jesus huh? Christ. I was reading something. Almighty. When people contact me, I made a post the other day about, you know, um, I think it was, um, what's his name? Killian, who was talking about FUT. And my only yeah. thought process is to tell these guys the truth. That, yes, it's, I think patients are at a great disadvantage today. That it is almost impossible to really get everything that you can out of a hair transplant if you go 100% FUE, especially if you are destined to advance to a high Norwood level. Mm -hmm. And everyone combats me on that shit. So what you're saying is you don't like FUE? No, that's not what I'm saying, idiots. Sorry, that's too harsh. I was the biggest advocate of FUE that existed, that still exists today. Period. Everyone fought me. Everyone in the industry told me it couldn't be done. And I pushed it, and I pushed it, and we made it happen. I had no idea that there were going to be a, gr a group of sociopaths that were going to take this really elegant and difficult procedure that should be, in my view, an adjunct or a replacement for some individuals and turn it into the primary technique that's being utilized today in hair transplant surgery. No fucking clue. I remember my very first conversation. I'm like, I'm not going to say who it was with. I was like, look, you got to see this shit. This kid looks like he wasn't even touched. I've never seen a hair transplant like this. Granted, it was a small amount of grafts being moved. But mm -hmm. my very words were, imagine what you can do for repair patients. And then when we sent that guy... years ago. And then when we sent this guy, uh, Len, a, a, he, he, was, he, was, he was irreparable damage. And this guy mm -hmm. comes into my show in WOR. I'm like, I said it on the air. I said, I'll hook you up with this guy, Ray Woods in Australia. And it changed his fucking life. Those were the patients this procedure was for. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry, I get very passionate. And then, and, and then to replace this strip surgery, instead of this, this narrow donor scar that winds up being usually the case in, in good hands, they get a, a, the swath of thinning that's maybe five, six inches wide from ear to ear, which makes a strip scar look like a paper cut. Envious. That's actually a great analogy. It, may, it makes people envious when they see a good strip scar compared to that. Yeah. And, and, and they're concerned about, like rightfully so, they should be concerned about that. But then back to the original thing, but their hairlines, and Mr. Rolanda said it, it, it he, he kind of um, uh, uh, had a, a great observation where Early on, they're like, hey, you know, it's, it's better than nothing. But then a year later, when you ask them how they, how they can style their hair, they're like, uh, I can't except for straight up. <laughs> you know, that's, and that's true. Yeah. That's actually how my old hair transplants uh, forced me to style my hair because not only were they thick and multi-hair grafts throughout the hairline, uh, they were misangled. So my only hairstyle was brushed back or to the side and... I never yeah, even so had that, a hair that's, transplant, that's a great and look what I'm stuck with. I mean, come on. 
It's not the end of the world to be Greens. stuck as long as it looks okay. It's, you know, there's nothing, nothing wrong with not being able to move it in every direction that you need to. But yeah, I mean, it is a look. All I can tell you is whoever's fighting me online, whoever's now claiming, like, like it's. I make one fucking post, and all of a sudden it's back to you know 2005, and I'm backing the FD, FUT butchers. Yeah. And what's funny is the people that are coming out at coming at you on this, they weren't even doing surgery back then. They're still in high school. Oh yeah, that one doctor. Yes. I, I'm thinking to myself, dude, maybe he was in high school. I'm like, maybe. I'm like, do you really? You're you're a surgeon. You understand how this works. Do you really believe what you're saying? Or you just, you know, listen, this is a guy who really honed his skills. He's able to do a very elegant type of FUE procedure. He's able to do it with his own hands. He's a young, youngish, fit guy. And what he wrote was essentially that the truth is that if you're good at doing FUE, most doctors can't perform it well then it's a superior, essentially, I'm not quoting him, it's a superior technique. And then I tried to explain to him that this isn't about which technique is superior. This particular discussion was about what's going to happen to these poor guys as androgens continue to decimate their hair follicles over time. And the follicles that you mm -hmm. moved so elegantly and so well with your incredible skill set die off in five years. Then what do you tell these guys? And he's like, oh, I understand now. What do you mean? I, di I didn't actually see the end of that. So, that. so he came around and said, I understand now? Yeah, I think he felt maybe that I was, because he felt maybe browbeaten. I'm not sure. But I hope he understood. There might be a language barrier because this is a Brazilian cat. Nice guy. Yeah. And he's good at what he does. There's no doubt about it. But yeah. again, the naivete of these people. You know, he actually said he was, he, he disagreed with John Cole's stance on doing pure FUE back in the day. But now, you know, he, he thinks that the reason we're having so many problems is because of the black market. I'm just like, uh, that's such a face palm. I'm like, listen, dude, Ugh. a lot of problems, you know, in this industry. But you're providing people in general with short term results when you have the opportunity to provide them with decades of a good hair transplant. Mm -hmm. And you're taking that away, you're taking that off the table just because the market is demanding all FUE. That's my only point. And if consumers That's know this, then they can make the choice. Like, okay, you know what? I'm good with a, a good, strong 10 years. I'm happy with that. I don't want to have a strip scar. At least you go in with your fucking eyes open. Anyone that says that they'll be happy for the next 10 years and they're fine, they're retarded. I, I, I don't even know if I can use that word anymore, but that's exactly what it, what it, it equates to. Because here I am 30 years now. As of this year, 30 years since I had my first uh, bad hair transplant. My first two, actually. I had them both in the same year. And I still care about my hair. I, I kept 65% of my hair, and I'm still miserable. I'm almost 60 years old. I try, I'm combing it, I'm forcing it down today, you know, to cover the spot the, with, the, with, the, with the makeup and the cement that I, that I spray on it. I'm actually, honestly, I'm not miserable. I feel very fortunate. I, I have it a looks, lot. Did you get a haircut? I did. I did. I got one today. A lot of gratitude. Good. I have yeah. a lot of fucking gratitude. But my fear is, thank you, Joe. When I get to my barber today, he's sleeping in his fucking chair, okay? That's what I'm <laughs> dealing with. That's how old he is now. Yeah. So I have to retrain like, somebody. Once, once he goes and Pfizer stops making Propecia. Oh my God, <laughs> Merck, Merck. But, yeah, but, or Pfizer, but, yeah. But, uh, but um, 
I think about that, and I'm, I'm going to have to explain to some, you know, 27-year-old tatted up, you know, chick how to deal with my bald spot, which could be fun. Oh, yeah. It could be fun. Anyway, let's take a phone makes, call. Makes for, makes for great radio. Yeah. Triple Eight. I'm telling you, I get there today. I drive there. I'm rushing there. Drive all the way to fucking Studio City. This guy is hunched over in his chair sleeping. <laughs> Oh, yeah, awesome. yeah. 888-659-3727. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, Hampton from Georgia. Hampton from Georgia. Hello, Hanson. Hey, Hanson or Hampton? Hampton, like the hotel. Okay, or, or like the, the, uh, the Hamptons in Long Hampton. Island. That's right. Hey. Yes, sir. What's happening, Hampton? Not too much. Uh, probably my third time calling in. I called you guys probably four months ago, and uh, I think y'all told me not to get a hair transplant, but I'm two and a half months in um, <laughs> to my hair transplant. And I remember you. I, and I, I don't know if you remember. When you got off the phone, when you got off the phone I was like, that dude's going to have a hair transplant. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, we knew. Um, we knew. It's all right. So where'd you go, so, and how's it going? Actually, y'all hit on – y'all hit – Y'all hit on it. I got FUE by John Cole in Georgia and Alpharetta. Okay. Yep. Uh, 2,700 graphs. Good choice. Right around there. How many graphs? 2,700. Okay. Okay. Give or take a few. Um, yeah. So far, so good. I'm two and a half months in, and I'm, I'm already starting to see some hair sprout. So. Well, you happen to pick, nice. like, you know, the godfather of FUE. So right. if you're going to go to anybody and you're going to get all FUE procedure, you picked a great surgeon. Yeah, yeah. Um, only a couple of concerns so far. One question I had is I have a little, maybe 2% numbness still, like where a lot of the graphs were placed. I wouldn't say numb. I can feel it. But it's just not quite as sensitive as, I guess, the rest of my scalp. Yeah, early days, that, man. Uh, early days. Two and a half months, months, it could take a year before you get all, all that feeling back. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I read online that that was the case. but And I'm some guys thinking. some guys will feel like they're wearing a helmet for six months. It really, yeah, it mine's really not nearly that bad. Yeah. Mine's not nearly that bad. Um, another thing, like, I haven't noticed too many pimples in the recipient so much, but about a month and a half in, two months in, about a month and a half in, I had a lot of ingrown hairs in the donor. Is that typical? Mm -hmm. It happens. Uh, I wouldn't say it's typical. It but happens, it, yeah. It happens to a lot of patients. It's not like a typical thing. It's not like, okay, you have an 80% chance of having this. But I, gotcha. I would say it's it, it happens even in the best hands. Gotcha. And, yeah, and we'll the reason why that happens is you usually have um, – even in the best hands, you're, you're going to have some debris from uh, partial transections of, um, of of grafts. There might even be um, like like if he was taking one part of a follicle from a multi hair follicle, there can be debris left behind, and it's just it's like getting a splinter where it tries to work its way out, and it, it looks like a looks and feels like a pimple. And in this case, it would look and feel like folliculitis. That's essentially what it is. So uh, there's there's always going to be some sort of debris left over from, you know, sticking a, a sharp punch into a skin tissue, rotating it, cutting through, slicing, and then pulling things out. There's going to be something left behind um, in every surgery. So everyone will have at least a couple of those, sometimes maybe a bit more than a few. And uh, it's nothing nothing to be concerned about. Now, the, the, I want you guys to, li to listen to this. Do you think Gary Linkoff could have explained it like that? And I like Gary. <laughs> I think he's a great guy. But, the, Thank you, you know, I've, and, I mean, when you think about... He's a great the, YouTuber, for sure. He's a great YouTuber. You think about the, the breadth of knowledge on this fucking broadcast. Joe, that was a... a, a, a just a... A very thoughtful, lucid explanation of a reality that most people have no idea happens during Makes surgery. Makes sense, but I was also wondering, you know, I got CRP as well, so I guess John Cole's version of CRP, and also A-cell in the donor. 
So I was hoping I was having mm-hmm. some hairs growing back in the donor. I don't know how likely y'all think that is, but uh, the A cell is supposedly going to regenerate a certain amount of grass in the donor. Um, I well, it, tell it you can that. be a situation where it's it's regen. It's uh, I don't know about regenerating. I, it's you know I, I I haven't looked too much into that, but it can it can help uh, damaged hairs or any any sort of transected hairs recover. Um, back to their former glory. I'll, I'll say it like that because I, I would it's, say it, Joe, interesting. I'm going to I'm going to interrupt again. I would say that uh, over the years, and I, I I'm a firm believer of this. In general, a cell has been a tremendous flop for mm. uh, for a lot of the claims that are being made uh, by the hair loss industry. Uh, mm-hmm. I do think it has yeah. its place. It's essentially what a, a extracellular matrix. It kind of creates a a scaffolding for skin to to heal in a, um, I guess, in a more effective way, um, maybe produce less scar tissue. There has been some evidence that it might help with follicular regeneration, um, but it's the data really isn't there, man. So I'd say if, you th- if, if a doctor throws it in, good for you. Yeah, so worst case scenario, it helps the healing process. That's what I would say, yes. Yes. I'll take it. I'll take it. But, yeah, I'm just waiting <laughs> yeah. to come in. You know, I was probably uh, How old a little four. So How old are you? I'm on topical finasteride, 0.1%. Can you hear me, uh, man? How, let me ask you, how old, how old are you? I'll be 29 in April. Okay. So you're a good age. I mean, that's a fair age, and, you know, you had a relatively small case. Um, yeah, so my balding didn't start yesterday, man. I've been losing hair since high school. It's kind of just been slow and steady. You know, right. it didn't didn't come in and end in five years. It's just been slow and steady. So, well, here's the thing: you've been dealing with it for a decade, so emotionally you're you're equipped and ready for a a, a relatively like an appropriate procedure where you're not getting you know ten thousand grafts moved at once, and you, right. you're going to be you're going to appreciate the growth that you get. Because you're going to see an appreciable positive change, so yep. you're you make like the perfect candidate. Yeah, man. Yeah, and you know, before before I even got the hair transplant, I went back in four months after being on the topical, and all of my hair counts increased all over the top of my scalp. So I responded well to the lowest dose of topical finasteride that's out there, and you know, yeah. I even. I did preliminary blood work on myself, on my androgens, before and after being on it. And it and it lined up perfectly with, I don't know if you guys have looked at the studies of the topical finasteride, but, you know, my DHT hit was of that of, that was showed in the studies. Um, I took like a 35, 40% hit of my DHT serum, which is kind of what it said in the topical studies. So, um, yeah, I've seen. You know, yeah, there's no, a, there's a lot of companies that have sent us uh, through the American Hair Loss Association sent us their studies directly as well. So a lot of companies that are coming out with their own subscriptions uh, brands as well, and and, and their claim that some of these companies are claiming that they're able to attain um, even more effective DHT blocking topically. So, you know, we had to compare the the original studies to all the different studies that are out there or that are being done in clinic. And yeah, man. I mean, that's. I mean, that's a very positive result that you're getting, you know. And a lot of people don't take. I think younger guys now are testing themselves before, which I think is kind of smart, because it can also give you an assessment of whether or not you might be uh, predisposed to potential side effects if your hormones are a little bit out of whack at the beginning. Right. You know? Yeah. So, exactly. Well, listen, dude. I'm, if you you have any other questions, I've got one more question. Um, I work out a little, and <laughs> I use creatine. So I was wondering on what what y'all's thoughts were on supplementing with creatine. I know there's. Did you see my Did you see my Instagram post? Are you, I do you, all right. First of all, follow me. All right, dude. At Spencer Cobra. I think I'm following y'all. I'm not on Instagram. I will follow you on Instagram. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. But we had a caller last week. I put I I put a brief clip of his call saying that he was very sensitive to creatine. All I did was post the, post that clip and the shit that I got from all the bros out there <laughs> was 
It was intense, man. I mean, I'm talking about pure hate. Like, how does this guy have a fucking platform? You know, he's he's spreading, you know, medical misinformation. <laughs> and I'm just like, listen, dude, what do you want me to do? This guy fucking calls in. This is a very, um, I'm not going to say typical, but it's a phenomenon that has been has talked about at the conferences. It's a phenomenon that occurs in physicians who mm. treat t practices who treat tens of thousands of patients. It's talked about within the industry. There's not enough, you know, literature to isolate whether or not this is a real or a myth. So when people do their research, they'll find a couple of flawed studies, like the rugby study, the the one rugby right. team study that I that I, I talked about. And that's it. So if I was a bro, a 29-year-old guy, you know, fucking taking career routine, I'd say that I was full of shit too. Mm -hmm. But we see it. And just like the caller last week, it affected him. Now, you may not be affected by it. You know, you may not be ultra sensitive to it. You said you've been balding for a long time. Do you, do you notice that you have a consistent effluvium while you're taking this? I haven't had my hair long enough to notice, you know, to notice the big difference in it in a while. You know, hopefully I can grow my hair longer and it looks decent now that I've, you know, fixed the front, quote unquote, fixed the front. If you're um, if you're taking creatine and you're not noticing that you are shedding on a very, even though your hair is not long, I mean, you mm -hmm. st you'd still be able to see a shed at any length. Yeah, I don't think it made much of a difference. And also, I'm on topical finasteride, so yeah, you know, I am inhibiting DHT to some degree so right so I, and guys who are listening to this for all the bros out there who gave me shit for a I mean some I'm posting somebody's story their experience I don't know if you're creatine, enabling them I'm not saying that creatine causes hair loss I'm saying that there is a lot of anecdotal data from thousands of patients who believe that they go through telogen effluviums while they're on creatine or that their hair loss got worse. That's it. But it's right. not going to affect everybody. And it sounds like it hasn't affected you. Yeah. So, cool. So I think it's safe to say neither of y'all uh, take creatine. <laughs> I would never touch that shit. I'm just kidding. I used to take it. <laughs> and, when, and that's why, and I even wrote about that. And, and I, I inject it. I believed at the time and this is around the time I was writing my book. I was like, this is, a re this is really weird. Like, I thought maybe because I was lifting too much, exercising too much. And then once I removed the creatine, I saw a marked or marked difference. So for me, I kind of noticed it 30 years ago. But at the time, they used to actually have a disclaimer on, on creatine bottles that it's associated with hair loss. They've taken that off since. Oh, wow. So I guess it's just a trial and error thing, huh? I think it is. And exactly. I, if, I wouldn't worry about it. You're on it. Don't yeah. fuck with anything that you're on right now. You just had a hair transplant. Let things grow. And if you somehow sure. see that it, I mean, things aren't growing as well as you want when you grow your hair out or that maybe you had more hair loss than you thought, how short is your hair now? I mean, it must be short now, but before you had the transplant. Um... I grew it out for about three, three and a half months. I kept it pretty short, man. Um, but I have, I did shave it, not shave it, but I buzzed it down to kind of keep, you know, um, a balanced look to my head, you know, since the front hasn't totally mm -hmm. took root yet. Yeah. So it's, it's real short now. It's common. But. Yeah. I would not worry about, I wouldn't change anything that you're doing. In your body, right? I wouldn't change your supplements. I wouldn't change anything. Just let the hair transplant grow in and see where you're at. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it. Hi, what brother. do y'all think? Last thing. Oh, what my God. Another one? Thing. My God. All right. What do y'all think about claims of 99.9% .9 of hairs sprouted by four and a half months? I don't, I don't think those claims are accurate. Okay. Like, in general? Oh. No. General no. from from having RP. Um, no, I mean if, if that if that's if that's what your doctor's telling you in his hands, I don't know. 
it's possible maybe in his practice with his CRP and all that stuff, that's what he's seeing. But yep. in, in general, as far as in the world of hair transplant surgery and from all the science that I'm aware of, that's not the case. Gotcha. Okay. All right, brother. Well, Good luck. Well. Congratulations. Thank you all. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Keep us updated. The hate that I got from that fucking creatine post. And I was silent. I, I, was, I didn't say a word. <laughs> it's just the guy talking. It's just the guy talking about his experience. <laughs> his experience. Yeah. And you're the one spreading medical misinformation. I am you spreading, spent apparently, misinformation. And I'm an idiot. Just don't get us. Uh, I don't know anything don't about. Us, uh, I don't know. Band. I don't know anything about, you know, physiology, biology. I don't know how these supplements work. Well, that's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and I didn't want to be a dick and I didn't want to sound, sound obnoxious to be like, dude, I'm the most read author in the fucking world on this subject. Yes, my books are, my last book was published. 20 something years ago, but whatever. A lot of people read them. Changed. God almighty. <laughs> Glad I'm not that young. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? This is Adrian from Melbourne, guys. How are we? <laughs> Adrian. How, Adrian. How, how do you guys say it? How, hey. how are you going? I'm good. I, I tried to ring in last week. I I had to stop over in Thailand uh, at uh, Bangkok for about two hours, and I just couldn't get Wi-Fi, so I tried to call in. Um, Still two hours stop and, over in Bangkok. I get it. Yeah, well, it was enough to, to, to get to <laughs> yeah, exactly. on the road. I, I gave up <laughs> in the end. But, yeah, but uh, yeah. look, um, and then it, it got more bizarre. I, I, I went home, and um, I crashed for probably 10 hours, and then uh, my dog's with my mum, so I went to her place. And I knocked on the door, didn't hear a dog, didn't know where, couldn't hear my mum, and uh, so I got the key, opened the door, and um, when I went in, I just saw a trail of blood in, in, in the, like, you know those scenes in those movies where you see the, the body chalked, outlined and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. I just saw footsteps of blood all the way, and I thought, what the fuck's going on here, man? But anyway, she's all good. She had a fall, um, and cut her leg and whatever. Oh, my God. But, um, so, yeah, yeah. But well, she, she, had, a nice smi she had a nice smile on her face on your Facebook page, so. She always did. That's one thing I always remember about her. That's right. But, yeah, no, she, she's good. She's good, Spence and Joe. Um so uh, back at work again, wow. I'm at work now. I, I feel like um, Steve McQueen out of Papillon. You know the scene when he's in isolation, he puts his head out the, the, the hole in the door and he says to the guy next to him, how do I look? That's how I feel. <laughs> right. But let's get back to the hair. Um, I, had a, I had a great time. I was there for about 11 days. Um, we managed to get 5,745 graphs. Um, wow. 3,062 were scalp, which blew me away. I, I didn't think I'd get three, let alone that much. But um, And how many mm -hmm. images did he, did he make you take with that fucking book? How many, <laughs> what, sorry? <laughs> you know that book he carries oh, around that he makes everyone take a picture with it with, with him with? Oh, uh, the um, autobiography of a, of a yogi. Yeah. Just yeah, everybody. Yeah. Um, I was actually thinking about starting an entire Instagram page of me because I have a copy taking pictures of strangers in that book. Well, I really think he can help the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> I really do. I think there's a there's a big market out there for the Hare Krishna. I know. Oh, yeah, anyway, there's a big market for but, sure. Yeah, their donors aren't great, but hey, what the hell? But uh, I, <laughs> I had a ball, guys. I was there for, like I said, 11 days. I met so many patients, which was fantastic. I was hanging around the clinic when I wasn't getting surgery, and then I was back at the farmhouse. And, look, I met, for the first time, another guy who was 18 and fucked up with punch graphs. So we, we had a lot in common, and we had a, a good chat. And on top of that, he had some FUE work done in Turkey, uh, his donor was shot, so I, I don't know what the, the game plan was for him, but I've got to give this guy credit. He was, you know, I thought I was pretty positive and, and had a good outlook on life. He was super philosophical um, and very upbeat. That's so I met a lot of patients. Okay, good for um, him. Some of them, yeah, yeah, spot on, Joe. 
um, some of them said that, you know, they'd seen my story or heard my story and um, that that was nice to hear, I guess, if it put a positive um, direction in their life. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I asked all the patients I met, I said, how did you hear about eugenics? And it could have been any any good clinic. And mm-hmm. some of them said, yeah, look, I did my research for two years or whatever, but the amount of patients that just said, but more or less, they just stumbled across because their their uncle had surgery there, so they thought that was good enough. And I just said to them, "You guys have dodged a bullet." You know, I'm not I'm not saying this to to praise eugenics, but just you're lucky you have just chosen a good clinic by just plucking it out of your bum like that because you know someone. You could have easily gone to. I mean, Turkey gets talked about so much lately. Um, but yeah. they could have gone anywhere and got, got fucked up really bad. And pe- so the point I'm making is just the amount of people who just aren't doing their research and aren't spending and taking time in doing that um, is, is is just crazy. Um, so look, I, I had look, a really good experience. The 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 problem with that is it's getting worse because you got YouTubers and Instagram influencers. I saw this one video by this um, uh, some Instagrammer that I've or sorry a YouTuber I've never heard of before. Um, it was really bizarre. He looked like he was about forty five, but he was dressing like he was sixteen and acting like he was sixteen, and he was talking about how he. Uh, realized he was losing his hair, got on um, WhatsApp with one of these clinics. I think it was, who was, I forgot the name of it. And within 24 hours, he was booked in for surgery and uh, was on his way in 24 hours to go have surgery. Oh, my God. That's the kind of mentality yeah. that's that's being applied to this. And it's just, now, obviously, he was getting paid to do this, it, It's which yeah. is a whole nother issue. Um, what's his name? Um, not, not Mike Thurston, but, uh, this other guy, I forgot his name. Uh, he got, he went to a clinic where I was actually presented with a package where they were going to pay me 10 grand to go to the clinic and have a hair transplant or a buddy of mine that I choose that I go with could have the tr- the transplant. And obviously yeah. I turned that down. But he went to this, like, I know this guy, like, he had to have gotten the same offer, if not more, because he's got a million subscribers. So all this is just being fueled by these idiots that are happy to, you know, make a quick buck. And, and of course, all these other people that think they're actually getting a good hair transplant for cheap, 1500 bucks or, or whatever. So, yeah, that's, that's where it's coming from, and it's getting worse. Had to throw that in there. It's shocking, yeah. Absolutely, and I'm really glad you brought that up, Joe, because that's that's been the bane of my existence for the last five, six, seven years or whatever, is seeing people who suddenly they're an expert. They've had one hair transplant or two hair transplants, and I mean, that equates to Spencer having done all his research writing his book and all the experience yeah. you have, Joe, in the work that you've been involved in. Well, and, well you know, and you, you, you said something that, interesting on, on Instagram, um, yeah. Adrian, and you said that you were talking about why you know, how things are getting worse. People aren't doing their due diligence or their research. And you were saying how the physicians in this field kind of like take a back seat to, to all of it. And they're like, they depend on Joe and myself to do all the heavy yes. lifting. Yes. And you said even your doctor Absolutely. feels that it's yes. our job to make yes. that happen. Absolutely. Um, that, is, that, is, that is true. And I'm yet to find a hair transplant surgeon of an elite uh, background to come out and publicly start to condemn a lot of the work. They can't. It's going on. It's it's and it, it is political suicide for them in their field, yeah. and they are fucking afraid. And they also think that for some reason they think that if they do that, it's going to affect their ability to make a living. Or that they can't be yeah. part of the grand poobahs organizations. And, you know, I mean, these doctors who want to be, like, rise and, and speak at the ISHRS, for instance, they got to shut up. They got to just get along, you know, go along to get along. They got to keep their fucking mouths shut. Otherwise, they're shunned by the organization. I had no, the guy who's going to be the, the next they're not, president. No, they're not shunned. They're, they're actively actively pushed away. Yes, through back channel emails to their colleagues saying, uh, 
don't give this guy any any air, any, I have any a, breathing room. I have a guy who I interviewed at FUE Europe 2019, and we had a really cool radio booth that it was a very active conference that year. And a guy who is on the board of governors of the ISHRS, and he said on camera, basically signed off on this, that being board certified is bullshit, you know, being a part of the ABHRS, and he used to be a big mm -hmm. guy in the ABHRS, and he said, he said this on camera, that all you need to be, to do, to be involved in the ISHRS is, that, is to have an active medical license. There are no qualifications. Yeah. His words, not mine. Yeah. We put that up online in 10 minutes. This guy was calling every doctor. He was trying to get it down. He was freaking the fuck out. <laughs> this guy fucking freaked out. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take it down. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to make your life miserable. But you're a fucking coward. What? This is what you think? Yet you want to have, be recognized by these organizations. You want to eventually be the president of this organization. And he basically said that the organization was bullshit on camera. Yeah, yeah. Don't think that's not going to come out again I, at some point. Not, not, not just on camera, but in front of his colleagues because there were a bunch of people around when he said it. Everyone's standing around with their fucking cameras like, you know, like, like you know, something important's going on. They're all filming everything that we're doing. So yeah. I'm not the only one who has that on, on film. Yeah. On film. <laughs> on film. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, recorded <laughs> on film. Yes, I'm almost 60. <laughs> we used to use film. I'm not far behind you. <clears throat> you'll, be, you'll be out in four years. I know, it's crazy. Yeah. It really is. But, but that, that's, yeah. that's the thing, Adrian. This is the reality of the industry. So to, 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 to your point, Nobody. Everyone will speak shit. Everyone will talk about the black market. Everyone will say whatever. You know, so, oh, it's so terrible out there. None of these doctors will do shit. And then they'll pretend to do something by creating a, an, an incredibly expensive, feckless campaign that they know isn't really going to change anything. But they want to put up an appearance that they actually give a shit. And they do not. Yeah. In my opinion. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I know it's 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 a cesspool out there, and you know, and, I, and I've said this to people. Like, people said, "Oh, you know, I like your hair transplant results or something." This is a month or two ago, and and I and I tell people, "Well, you know what? I've only done this because of scars. Like, if I didn't have scars, and if I knew then what I know now, I just shaved my head, and my four hundred one k would be pumping, right? You know." <laughs> um, mm, yeah. It's not just the cosmetics about hair. I mean, that's that's just sort of the bonus for me. That's not the main driving force. Um, and uh, yeah, like those horrible Reddit forums and stuff. People are still, uh, you know, the, the 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 number one topic that seems to pop up every half an hour is where's the cheapest clinic in Turkey that I can go to, or the words to that effect. And um, yeah, it's a losing battle. It really is. Um, well, it, it, I still believe that it can change, but I'm a little, yeah. you know, Pollyannish about things. Um, I think that maybe I'm trying to get some of the younger doctors who claim they don't want to be political, but when I really put a couple of guys' feet to the fire to come out, they were a little concerned. You know, there's a couple yeah. of guys in, in, in Great Britain who they're very... You know, there's there's an organization uh, called the uh, what is it, the B H what is it what is that British Association B A H R S. Oh, why can't I not remember that? Yes, a lot of real doctors complaining about that organization. Yes. Yeah. For good and reason. I'm like, well, why don't we talk about that? Let's talk about what your concerns are. And that they tell me their concerns behind the scenes. One person sent me a dossier. It was like it must have been 20 pages of all the nonsense that goes on in the UK with that organization, allegedly. Yet they will not come out and publicly talk about it to save, potentially save lives. So this is what yeah. I say. Fuck them all. We'll do the best that we can. 
and we'll provide the information that we can. And if it grows, great. If it doesn't, we'll help 2,000 people a, a, a week. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of lives. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've got to take the Oscar Schindler approach, you know? Yeah. That's um, actually very interesting you that you said that. You can um, Joe's on my list. <laughs> I'm on lots of your lists. Adrian, listen, we're going we're, we're gonna to go, man, but I always appreciate your no call. No worries, bud. And by the way, Pleasure. I did not forget about our interview. I just have not started that page yet, uh, but it's in the yeah. can, and it's, it's, you, you did a great job. No, no, my pleasure. No, it's fantastic. Good to get the word out, and uh, it was good fun. All right, brother. You take care. All right, guys. Okay. Take care, man. Weekend, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. 888 Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this, and where are you calling from? Hey, caller. What's up? Hi. You're gone. Hello. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this, and where are you calling from? My name is, let me turn you down. I got you. <laughs> okay. All right. And he just hung up. Call back. <laughs> Guys, the phone number is 888 Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Nathan from Oceanside. Nathan, what's happening, man? What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing, sir? Hey guys. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I, sorry, I, I tried calling earlier and then um, we got kind of disconnected. So no problem. First time calling into the show and uh, welcome. Don't really know what the format is. Thank you, thank you. And um, I didn't know if maybe you wanted to hear a little bit about my story or how did you, you how did you find us? Uh, your, your first first time calling. How would you find us? Found you on Instagram. Okay. Instagram. So through, through, my, through uh, Joe through Spencer's uh, Insta or or my Insta. Spencer's, of course. Come on, dude. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you and Spencer, go ahead and talk. I've got like a four. I've, I've got like four thousand <laughs> followers, man. I'm huge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Well, he, in, All right, in, go in, ahead. You've been kind enough to answer a couple questions of mine too. So, funny thing is, is I was listening oh. to last. Week go over to an appointment and you guys were giving call or people shit for not calling in. So I started to feel guilty. And I was exactly. like, you know what? I don't, I don't usually call into to programs, but you know, I, I, I need to, I need to do my part. So, well, you know, that's very well, kind of you. And I Thank appreciate you. that, man. And, um, I'm thankful to be on. So, uh, I, I probably have, um, probably been losing my hair now probably for the last, 20 years. I'm 44 years old, and uh, okay. I still have quite a quite a bit um, quite a bit in the back. Don't have really any thinning in the back, but right around you know the crown area. And it, it's been a slow progression. And it is. I, I used to obviously when I was 19, 20, just had had a straight line across, but it's it's slowly gone back and kind of that that U shape. And I've tried some topical products. I've, I've never tried minoxidil. Uh, I've never tried Propecia. I've been a little bit reluctant to do so. I've been using Nioxin, Nioxin shampoo, um, mm -hmm. Nutrioc, um, and so, I, I don't know if that does anything. All I, the, I, I, my you, levels of biotin. All the happy horse shit. All the happy horse shit? Okay. Pretty much, okay. yeah. So... It it, I mean, it it makes my scalp feel nice, but look. Let me tell you, when now. when I was a kid, when I started to lose my hair, the first thing that I did was buy the entire Nioxin Nioxin package from my barber, who okay. these guys don't know shit. And at and and at the time, they used to come in these glass vials that you would break the top off of. They made it look very. Kind oh, of like those. you know, oh. apothecary, like like you're going to an old school pharmacy and you're getting the shit, you know, especially <laughs> shit to put in your head. And I'm putting this on my head and I'm doing the whole thing with the shampoos and I'm buying it and I bought the Helsinki formula, all the shit that it continues to this day. Somehow, and I think it's because Nioxin got it. They were they really latched onto the into the salon market, and then they got into like some of the big box stores. Um, Somehow they're still in existence, man. And there are 
millions of people who have used this product and all their products. It's amazing to me. Now, I'm not so, saying that so the shampoo or anything is bad, but I can tell you this. In my experience and in the experience of everyone who's uh -huh. ever contacted me over the years, no one's ever, no one's ever grown any hair from it. Uh-huh. Has it prevented further hair loss, though, is what I'm, I'm – yeah. that, that's kind of where, where I'm hoping it'd be working. Well, it's a good question, but, I mean, think about why, why do you think that it, any of these products would? What would be the mechanism – of these products to really help you to prevent hair loss? Being a pretty ignorant consumer, I'm thinking maybe vitamins being absorbed by the scalp somehow is, is uh, getting nutrition to that hair follicle. That's just kind of my thinking, but obviously my uneducated thinking. So. Well, I mean, and think, mm -hmm. how, do, how do you think that, how do you think that the, vitamins can get through the stratum uh, corneum of the scalp unless there was some sort of a, I don't know, a, a drug vehicle, perhaps, to get it, you know, into the hair follicle. Now, again, I, th I'm just doing this for the purposes of our listeners. Here's the reality. Oh, I, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, the, the reality is none of this shit's going to get into your fucking hair follicles. Now, there are some okay. good products out there that can maybe lower inflammation of your scalp, which could benefit. Mm -hmm. It could benefit your hair loss. Uh -huh. But none of these vitamins or herbs, topical stuff or minerals, they cannot penetrate your scalp. Now, there are some essential oils that can get into your scalp, but that's questionable as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But anything that you just shampoo on, you know, put on, shampoo out, it's not going to do anything in my view. Yeah, I've tried castor oil too, which is very messy. Yeah. Very messy. Oh, yeah. I, you, you got people yeah, online with 400,000 followers who are se they're selling rosemary oil treatments to these poor rose, suckers. Rose, rose hip oil? <laughs> I've, I've heard of rose hip oil as well. Rose hip, rosemary, yeah, all that's that. That's big stuff. on Reddit right now. They're, te they're telling people how to oil their fucking scalps to regrow their edges. In quotes, their edges. I mean, the whole thing <laughs> yeah. is so fucking insane. And then there are people battling out online saying it does work. It doesn't work. It does work. It's worked for me. I've been doing this for years. And Jesus. If this shit worked, it would all be on the cover of Time magazine. Yep. Yeah. This is about to turn into a $14.5 billion industry this year. Worldwide. Money, money, oh. money. Do you think it's because people are doing well with rosemary oil? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> How, okay, so, so a guy like myself who I'm not losing my hair fast, but I have seen diminishing, uh, I, I've seen through the years the hair uh, recede mm -hmm. on the front of the scalp and in the corners. What do I, how do I prevent that from going back? and back and back and back till it's just complete. I'm just, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm 44 right now when I'm 54, when I'm 64, I don't know if I'll care too much when I'm 74, but I'm thinking in 10 year block. You'll care. If you're still, if you're still keeping, if you're still keeping yourself together at 74, you're going to care. And I'm going to let Joe answer this question, but I, I want to make this clear also. If things are yes, really sir. slow for you, I'm not telling yeah. you to stop using the shampoos that you're using. I would stick to your same regimen because it seems like you're doing fairly well for 44 and so slow so i wouldn't fuck with anything that you're doing however yeah. if you really want to stop the progression of your hair loss you're probably going to have to see a doctor and consider getting on medication i'm gonna let joe take it from here okay. well that's the only way to, to really stop it because none of these none of these uh um uh old wives tales and uh, bro science treatments work just because there may be a, a few a few guys out there that are seeing some sort of anecdotal uh improvements it doesn't mean that it's actually working it doesn't mean that it works mm -hmm. for you know other people either it, it doesn't like these things just don't work if they did you gotta you gotta think about this logically and, and spencer was touching on this uh, just just a bit ago but if any of these things actually worked don't you think 
and I'm just you people watching this, not not you callers specifically, but don't you think that one of these pharmaceutical companies, someone might say, hey, you know what? If we can isolate what it is exactly that's making this work and then put it in a bottle and, and, and start selling it as, you know, an actual hair loss treatment, we might be able to make some money on this. No one's doing that yeah. because it doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> that's why it's complete garbage. There are... How are they able Only to get away with that then? How are they able to just, sorry about that, sorry for interrupting you, but I'm just wondering That's how okay. they're able no. to push a product that bold, bold claims and, you know, on the nioxin box and the Nutri, Nutriox box, you know, you know, has, a, you know, make claims like 90% of men, you know, see, see new growth or keep their hair and, you know, well, they're they're very claims. they're they're very careful with their claims because um, first off, these aren't actual medications where claims are are, are being monitored and uh, I, I mean that's a whole different story, but uh, are being governed by the FDA because a lot of treatments are um, supplements which are not um, governed by the FDA. But when it comes to shampoos and things like that, that's also in the, in the same category as a supplement where they're not, they're not, you know, there's nothing they're doing with this. But they also, but as far as, um, you know, FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, they, they can't be making unrealistic claims. So what they do is they, they keep their descriptions within the boundaries of what the active ingredient actually may do. So um, if, if a product is being sold online or through late night infomercials or whatever. And they say um, includes an FDA approved, they should be saying clear, but FDA approved uh, hair loss medication, but they don't tell you what it is. You know it's minoxidil. And then they'll say, they'll, they'll, they'll present some sort of uh, statistics about how many people have regrowth or stops their, their hair loss or whatever. So they walk a fine line with that. Now, there are products out there that just couldn't give a damn about what anyone says or you know, reports them to, to whomever. They will say, you know, 90% or some, you know, ridiculous statistic of people that take uh -huh. this product will regrow their hair. I've, I've seen them. Um, but yeah. how do they get away with it? Well, uh, no one really cares. Well, I, can, honestly, I, I can tell because, you. I'll, because I'll the way people look level. at it is yeah. if it's not hurting yeah. you, then, they, then, then what's yeah. the big deal? They're well, not going to waste you, their time with I'll it. I'll give you a brief right. rundown. Back in the late 90s, the FTC finally decided to crack down against all these, you know, bullshit snake oil products. And they took a very, you know, it seemed like it was going to be a very harsh stance, but it was very short-lived. So you know, they, these companies were no longer allowed to advertise on television. They were no longer allowed to make claims in the back of men's magazines and on, you know, in bodybuilding magazines, stuff like that. Very short window and period of time. And there was a time when, at the beginning of my career, um, around, I think this happened around 2001 or something, that the, um, the um, National Advertising Division of the Better Business Bureau reached out to me and they wanted my help to, you know, provide them information about a product. And this is a pretty famous product at the time called Avacor. And at the time, Avacor were, oh, making, yeah. a, were making a lot of claims. And one claim was that it was all natural. Well... They were actually providing a, a generic minoxidil solution with their vitamins and shit like that. And that's where people are really oh. having problems. So I worked with uh, the National Advertising Division, the Better Business Bureau, and the FTC, and we were able to essentially shut them down. Mm. And they had to pay a, a lot of fines. That's all great. But I realize when I'm working with these people just how understaffed they are and the fact that hair loss is really on the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to the mm -hmm. FTC getting involved or the FDA getting yeah. involved and even the National Advertising yeah. Division of the Better Business Bureau, which is not a nonprofit organization. You know, they work directly with the FTC and the FDA. So they have to pick and choose the most egregious cases. So when you go on Amazon, whatever sure. it is, and you see all these products, or if you see a mm -hmm. company that's been around for a very long time, I'm not saying this is the case, but you never know who's been greased. Not saying yeah. that I know anything about yep. this, but you never know. <laughs> so it's a very shady fucking industry, and the regulators, in my view, 
have not acted in the best interest of consumers all these years. And that's why it's so easy to get away with all this shit. Well, that, that's a damn shame, too, because there is... I know for myself that um, even though my hair loss isn't quote-unquote extreme, I have quite a few buddies who are completely bald at my age. Um, you know, every, everyone's different, and it, it affects... Uh, it affects every man uh, in a different way psychologically. Some yes. people don't care. I have mm -hmm. a brother-in-law where he, he shaves, shaves his head completely bald, and he's got the best hairline you know I've, I've seen on a man his age, and he just couldn't care less. And um, well, he we, also we often he also that. thinks that he probably looks better with a shaved head. That's why he does it. He feels good about it. So he's one of these guys. I think I think it's just laziness, and he doesn't want to style it. <laughs> yeah. But if, but if it really but if, but if he was affected emotionally, if he thought that he he passed a, a mirror, or woke up in the morning, took a shower, looked at himself, and thought, "Oh, this sucks," he wouldn't do it. Yeah, you know. So you're right. Yeah. It's about yeah. our how how well we can deal. And yeah. there are guys who kind of just concede and like, you know what, I'm not going to deal with this shit anymore. I'm not going to medicate myself. I'm not going to get surgery. And even though they prefer to have hair, they figure it out. They choose to shave their, their hair, their head. And uh -huh. they're, you know, they may think they look a little worse, but they have the constitution to deal with that. Yeah. I'm not one of those guys. Yeah. Neither am I. Neither yeah. am I. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that aspect as well, because I think, and this is something that, that you've talked about on Instagram quite a bit, Spencer, and probably even on the program, is just the emotional toll that this takes on men. And how yeah. I know even in, in my own immediate family, when I've talked to, say, my sister, brother-in-law, my mother, they will they even make fun of me for buying in, in, in jest, of course, but just little nudges like, oh, you're buying those those potions and lotions again, you know. Mm. They go, oh, Nathan, you, you have a great head of hair. It, it looks fine, even though the edges are, you know, not where I want them to be. Sure. And they know that I've lost mm -hmm. quite a bit of hair over the years. But to them, it's just, quote, unquote, fine. I don't want fine. I'm not striving for, for just okay or fine. Well, you should suggest I, that <laughs> both your mother and your sister go without makeup for one month. That's what I'm saying. I, I the double standard just <laughs> it, it infuriates me because of my. I mean, that'd be a whole other topic. But the plastic surgery in my family, as far as nose jobs, people getting their chins done, breast implants. I mean, that's totally fine. Oh but sure. If you're, if you're a guy, you oh, know, of course. You're, just, you're just supposed to deal with it. As a woman, you can like, actually well, have, have you, a, you can actually have someone insert silicone orbs into your body. And that's fine. And you know what? As guys, we're like, yeah, we want that. We like that. That's great. Well, yeah. You know, it's not a problem. <laughs> but if someone essentially wears a prosthesis because they've lost their hair, that's they right. are they are the fucking joke of the, the century. Joke. Yeah. And I I just I, I hope that one day we can get to a point where we can support men emotionally and um and, and, and just change our attitude don't make me cry uh, yeah. collectively of, the, of this just just deal with it attitude and it's not that big of a deal men care about their appearances as well men care about you know their aesthetic so a, a lot of us want to look our best and well, we don't want to be bald no we and want to have a great head of hair and and even if it's yeah you know th there's this misunderstanding, you know, all you're talking about plastic surgery, you're talking about people who they were born a certain way, they grew up a certain way, they, they evolved in, in a certain way, they look a certain way, and they want to augment their appearance. We don't want to augment mm -hmm. our appearance. We want to maintain just it. To say what I have. We want yeah, to maintain exactly. we, We're losing something. Right. It's a big difference. Yet yeah. augmenting your appearance Great is okay. Point. Yeah. So um, well, for yeah, go ahead. For for women, yeah, and and and, and nothing against that. I I totally support that. I'm just saying it needs to be applied on the other side as well. 
Dude, when because, the time is right, you know, I'm going to have so many stitches on the side of my head, it's not going to be funny. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'll talk about it. You know, it's not out of yeah. vanity. It's To me, it's all about maintenance. I Why do I work out? Because I don't want to fucking be stuck in a fucking wheelchair and a walker when I'm 65 years old. You know? Absolutely. I want to Same try, reason I do. Yeah, I want to try to maintain what I can for as long as I can. That's it. Right. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with feeling like you're, you look your best. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. what you were just talking about, it, it really, like, the angle that you just came up with as far as the differences between, you know, men losing their hair and getting a hair transplant versus, say, women, um, you know, getting nose jobs, boob jobs, butt jobs, lip jobs, whatever. That's a great mm -hmm. perspective because, you know... When, when we're losing our hair, we're not losing our hair, we're losing our identity. We're losing, Absolutely. you know, we're, 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 we're changing before our very eyes in the mirror. And, and to the, you know, to, to people that see us every day or, you know, face to face or on camera, if that's, that's what you do. But people that are getting their boob jobs, lip jobs, butt jobs, whatever, nothing's changing about them. That's how they, that's how they were from early on, and they're making that uh, elective to change themselves. We didn't choose to lose our hair. We didn't elect. Yeah. We didn't press a button to make it, you know, yeah, I want to lose my hair. That, that'll, that'll look good. You know, we didn't choose that angle. And so, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's an obvious situation that we're dealing with here, but I've never heard it like that. It, it never... That's a great perspective. I'm glad that you said that, um, because we can we can feed on that and build on it. Because I think I think it's just another angle that we need to use to drive this home to people into acceptance. Because I was talking about no, the ball. No, no disrespect to the caller, but how long have you been doing the show, Joe? Hey, there's always Me? an opportunity to see things just slightly different. And this is one of those things. It's like, but this uh -huh, is what we see, talk about all the time. But it's the same thing with my donor versus you know the subject of the show, donor versus hairline. What's more important? Like I just came up with that observation. It's like people are giving more more consideration about the donor area than they are the final result in the hairline. It's like these little these little realizations. It's like, Carl, do you know what he's talking about? Can, I'm if, totally lost. If you, if you can drive that home. From from this different perspective, like like a, a new angle, it makes people wake up. I said this to someone the other day. They're like, I didn't think about that. It opens things up. It, it makes people more aware. And so, I, caller, I what agree. you were just talking about, thank you for for that slight change on perspective because I, I think it's valuable. I think thank um, you guys. like yeah. I want to. I want to I want to use this on my Instagram. This clip here. I want to talk about this because I think I think it's important that people that aren't going through this, that do want to have their boob jobs, their butt jobs, their lip jobs, all the jobs that they can elect to have, you need to understand that we didn't choose this. And by having a hair transplant after some, uh, you know, hopefully we've done our research and we've we've tried everything else first, we're just trying to get back where we were. We're not trying to enhance yeah. something to be bigger or rounder or uh, stick out more. We just want our hair back. It's pretty simple. Yeah. And, and I think I think okay, too. So that's my clip. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I think I think I think it goes, and, and this could be a whole another topic, but I think it just goes to uh, it go, it goes to uh, uh, roles in society, and um, I, I know those are changing, and there's a lot of discussion on those and whatnot. But if, if you're just kind of going back, you know, kind of old school roles of men and women, and uh, and just the mindset of you know a, a, what a man is supposed to do, just kind of you know shut up and deal with it, and then you know uh, women are are you know allowed to uh, wear makeup and 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 do these things, so. Yeah. I, I know that I know that dichotomy is changing quite a bit, but um, there there is still that huh. that mindset of um, well, that, well, you, you know you just you, you just need to kind of you know you know it's not that I, I hear this a lot of, a lot of times I hear this quite often, and and of course my family's going to tell me <laughs> they're going to be the nicest of course, mm -hmm. and um and, and it, it you know my my hair doesn't look bad I I wish I could show you guys a photo 
Um, but it definitely, it, the, the fullness, the thickness, and, and the edges, it, it definitely substantial. But, uh, again, um, j- just the... Look, the, it- Gender. It's it's relative. Okay, so what you're what you're saying about you know you, you have you have all this hair, it's relative. I've dealt with this. I've talked to so many guys just like you where they've come to see me. Like when I used to go to Europe to do consultations, uh, I'll never forget. Uh-huh. I'll never forget. Had this guy sh- show up. He had um, he had the hair of what's his name uh, that played Rudy, um, Sean Astin. Remember when he was young? Oh, Sean, how yeah. strong his hair was. Right. Yes, yes. This absolutely. guy had hair that made him made him look like, like he was receding. It was insane. This Irish guy that showed <laughs> up and he and and he wanted to talk about hair transplantation. And and he was just like he lost maybe a few like a very small amount that no one else would notice, but it was killing him. It was driving him crazy. Him, right. And then you got guys that How and then you, you got guys that are walking in that are, you know, Norwood sixes and they're concerned about their, you know, it's like the spectrum of people that come in looking for, you know, answers about the hair loss and, and solutions is vast. And so when I, I hear you saying, yeah, it, it doesn't look like much, you know, I've, I've got thick hair. It's like, yeah, we get that, but it's re- very real to you. You're seeing your, your very stable, you know, sounds like very stable uh, hair situation. You're still seeing that being eroded albeit slowly, yep. but it's, it's, it's concerned. Like it's, I completely get it. So when you say, yeah, other people wouldn't notice, well, you notice and that's what matters. So what do you do about it? I do not. Yeah. Yeah. And of course I, when I speak to my family or they see me, they're, they're going to, the family usually going to give you, give you the, you know, it's, it's not that bad. You know, you, you look really great. Kind, kinder words, mm-hmm. less judgmental. Typically, of course, well, they, so. in, in, a, in, a, in a way they do that. But the fact that they <laughs> yeah. then joke about the fact that you're buying these lotions and potions and they think it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's a little, yeah, that's yeah, a little hurtful about that. That's a little painful. Yeah, no, it is. It is yeah. for yeah. sure. And that's why I would yeah, tell I would tell my mother or I would tell my sister, I've, I'm going to take your fucking makeup away and you have to go to work today with no makeup. Yeah. On. <laughs> Spencer, that's that's so that's funny you bring that up because. I, I actually, I actually had that comeback probably a couple months ago. I said, "Well, I said, how about you don't wear the fake eyelashes or or do your nails for a couple months? Yeah. You know, fake, why, why? That's fake not, that's fucking not eyelashes. To, Think about that. That's they not, glue yeah. hair onto their eyes. Right. This is a necessity. <laughs> but again, I think it's the view of I think it's the old school view of you know, I, I'm a woman. I you know." kind of the old school uh, of, of men are kind of in, in one category, women are in the other. And it's just, you know, it's not, it's not manly to, to be concerned about your hair. You know what's, you know what? And uh, I, don't, you know how I many don't know people I've had to dress down. Or more just kind of my, my, no, you know, situ- I, my I've had to dress down women. I've, I've had a base and I don't like to do this, but if they don't know what I do, they meet me for the first time. And then I happen to talk and I, and, and if I don't lie to them and tell them I'm, you know, in construction or finance, which I've done, um, and I tell them exactly what I do. They don't fully understand it. Then their first question is, "Well, is that a hair transplant?" I'm like, "No." So is I mean, no. what are you wearing? Is it is it a hair piece? I'm like, "No." I paint the back of my head and I wear hairspray and I take medication. And then when you t- explain to them that you're wearing a little makeup on the back of your head to to camouflage the contrast between your thinning scalp. And your hair, at first, they're a little mortified. They don't understand. Like, why would you do that? And I'm like, why would you wear a mask of makeup? Why would you wear a disguise yeah. to leave the house why every would you fucking paint your, day? Why would you paint your yeah, eyebrows? Why, why are you wearing lipstick? Yeah. yeah. Why are you wearing eyeliner? So, why are you Why are you getting your nails so, done? It's, it's, you so, don't need to get your nails done for any reason. Right. So, so then I explain it. I'm like, look at me. I mean, would you say that I, I'm, you know... I, I'm keeping myself together, especially for a person my age. Would you ever have noticed that I had any, you know, makeup on the back of my head? And I'm like, no. Yeah. And I'm like, well, everyone sees you walking around with a face full of makeup. No one has any clue what right. you look like. I said, I'm like, this is all I got. I could shave my beard. I can grow my beard. <laughs> That's it. I got nothing else. 
And then yeah. it starts a whole conversation. And then people start to understand, and I end up sleeping with them. I'm just kidding. And I and and then it's just, <laughs> you know, but, but but then it's just you know, I mean, it becomes you, you, they kind of understand it, you know, and they realize how much they have to do just to leave the house in the morning. A lot of that's false advertising too, because when that makeup comes off, or you take that Instagram filter out of there. Uh, things can change real quick. Let me tell you something. I was the luckiest man in the world. I, common law, woman I was with for a very, very long time. This person did not. She never wore anything on her skin. What you saw was her skin. That's Perfect. so rare. Yeah. That is for, so rare. for a woman. That's. And she would that's be heavily. If, that if I, she put I a little eyeliner different. on right. and mascara, or whatever. And maybe some like lip gloss or something like I don't know what you put on. Yeah. She didn't even wear lipstick. That was it, you know. Yeah, and I was beautiful. like, this, yeah, just, this just is the beautiful. natural glow of her radiance. Yeah, yeah. That but, to, but to be to be honest, she obviously didn't need it. Like, come on, she didn't need it. But uh, women who are as pretty as she is still cover their skin because they want it to be like glass and perfect. You know, yeah, it, no yeah. marks. Yeah. And, now, and, she has beautiful skin. So, yes, you're right. She doesn't need it. But most people at the age of 15, 16 start to wear it. And then they're yeah, stuck in this and disguise. That, and that's just that that's got to be got to be. It's because what, what they're what they're seeing on television and now television. I mean, the Internet is the new television. So what they're seeing on the Internet, what they're seeing with these photo filters you know, and a lot of times you'll see these gals and, you know, they, you can't even see a pore. And it's like that. That is not how we were created. We we have we have indentations and pores on our face. Like you, you literally look like a cartoon right now. You look like a cartoon. Like you might think you look good. Your girlfriends <laughs> are putting little fire emojis and you know saying you go girl. But Dude, the, ter are, the term from the 1930s and 40s was let me go and I have to put my face on. That's what they used to say. Yeah. I think I've heard that before. Yeah, that old school term. Yeah, yeah. Put, put my face on. Yeah. Let me put my face mm -hmm. on. Thank you. Tarifying. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, Good times. you know, no, you, you just have to come to, and I have a long time ago, and I'm able to speak about this because this is what I do for a living, and I'm very open about it. And I, I never try to insult anybody, but when they're a little insulting, I, I just try to provide them with perspective that yeah. we – are trying to do our best, just like you, to maintain our appearance and to feel comfortable in our own skin. And it's not for you. It's for us. Right. Right. Yeah, 100%. I mean, why are these women walking around in fucking four or five-inch heels killing themselves? Because it makes their yeah. legs look a bit longer. It makes them look taller. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, it pushes their asses out. It makes them, in their minds and in our minds, more effable. That's it. That's the only reason they do that. Yeah. They're not yeah, wearing it because they enjoy on. wearing high heels because it's comfortable. Yeah, that's something exactly I'm going to look up a little bit yeah. later. How, why the high heel was invented. I'll have to look into that. I'm still, I'm still baffled by the fact that, you know, women would put themselves through so much discomfort for. It's all to elongate their, extra. to change your appearance, to augment their appearance, to elongate. And listen, I think it's hot. I got, to me, there's yeah, nothing wrong with yeah. it. No. But let's be honest, that's the only reason. Spencer, take camera off me. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna leave the camera on you, Joe. Yeah, so listen <laughs> listen, dude. I I appreciate the call. I really do. I'm glad that you found me on Instagram. Yeah. You you're one of my four thousand something Thank followers. Thank you so much for taking my call. Oh dude. Yeah. You you're welcome. And Joe just left. I don't know what he was talking about, by the way, but we just let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully uh you know, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable as as we go on. Hopefully, if I if I come up with some um, some other questions, you'll allow me to call back in and, and wrap out with you. guys. First of all, this is a great this is a great call. It's needed. Young guys, all of us, people need to hear this. Women who are tuning in need to hear this. We will use some of your stuff for for Instagram as well. I know Joe said oh, that he, that he thank wants you. to. Thank you. And this is a yeah. really important topic because you know, I, twenty some odd years ago, I created a place where guys especially can talk about and women are welcome to talk about a subject that society does not uh, allow us to talk about openly.
And no. as far as we've come with the internet, and things have changed a lot. I see guys gluing hair pieces on 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 their heads on on the internet, which is great, and as acceptable as it, it's seemingly becoming to want to, you know, correct our hair loss or to stop our hair loss, it's still, you know, I think deep down, especially with women, there's still a little bit of this raised eyebrow, like. Mm, yeah. That's not really too manly to, to be that concerned about your hair. Well, that's bullshit. That's so, how I feel, too. All right, yeah. brother. Well, 100%. listen, you, you, you are welcome to call in any time. All right. Thank you, Spencer. Okay, Thanks good luck. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate it so much. Take care. All right. Thank Bye-bye. you. Talk soon. Right. Bye. Phone number is 888-659-3727. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, caller, what's Hello? up? Yeah, hey. How's it going? Um, my name is Reese from uh, London, Ontario, Canada. Hey, Re- did you say Reed or Reese? Reese, yeah. Hey, what's happening, man? How are you? Uh, not bad. No, I just kind of wanted to see your thoughts on uh, the products I use and then see what's bullshit and what's not really. All right, so let's talk about it. What are you using? And I'll tell you if it's bullshit. Uh, first off, I'm 22, just turned 22. Um, I was on, been on Finasteride for like, probably two years now, uh, 1.25 milligrams a day. Okay. And started to get into some new stuff. And I don't know if it's bullshit or not. But the first one here is uh, New Nordique Hair Grow. If you've ever heard of that. What is it called? New Nordique Hair Grow. I think I saw it online, but yeah. Uh, what about it? You bought it? Just like one of those like horse crap products. I have it already. It, just, it was like at Costco. I just grabbed it. I've seen it. So Yeah. I would say that most likely if it's in a big box store, unless it is a over-the-counter drug like that contains minoxidil, uh, it's probably not going to yeah. help you. Yeah, that's what I was, that was what I thought, but 20 bucks was 20 bucks, just thought I'd give it a shot. Yeah, well, what's in it? What is it? Um, okay, so it's got uh, apple extract, millet extract. Uh, zinc, biotin, horsetail, silicone, and a bunch of other ones. I don't. I don't think I could even say. It sounds like a winner, dude. So this is a, this is a capsule, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, this one is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say that it there's a, there's a very strong chance that it's not going to help you, and yeah. um, you know. But listen, it's only twenty bucks. Exactly, yeah. But then I also got another one, too. So I think you guys probably talked about it before, but Nutrafol. Yeah. Listen, I mean, there's some there's some data that the ingredients in Nutrafol can help. You know, anything that contains something that will suppress or lower your DHT uh, can help with hair loss. But the truth of the matter is you're already taking 1.25 milligrams of finasteride. Why would you want to add? Yeah. Why would you want to add a, an herbal supplement that can lower your DHT even more? You know, if you're already on finasteride and you're doing okay, and you're not having any adverse side effects. You really kind of want to stick, in my view, to continuing uh, the medication and seeing how you do for the long term. And if you do add for anything, sure, yeah. in my view, if you're already on medication, there's no reason to add a. Um, a, a nutraceutical, even if it contains contains herbs that could lower DHT. Gotcha. Okay. You know, and there's also just to know, even just because it it'll claim that there's no adverse side effects because these um, these uh, supplements are not uh, regulated under the FDA. It doesn't mean that they won't cause adverse side effects. Anything that could potentially lower your DHT can cause adverse sexual uh, events and side effects. So I never think it's a great idea to combine the drug finasteride with an herb that can lower your DHT. What's the okay. herb? I missed this. It's a uh, Nutrafol, which I know has salt, palmetto, oh, and yeah. some other stuff. Yeah. No, not a good idea. Yeah, all that. I'm on all the hair, skin, and nail vitamins, collagen, uh, some extra supplements uh, like Selenium, uh, I didn't, selenium ask, I didn't ask how stuff. old you are. What are you? You're like you got to be like twenty. Or I just turned twenty-two. Okay, so that's why you're on all that shit. N- listen, I was the same. I'm, I was I'm not on yet, just on finasteride. But yeah, I'm just thinking about if I should add them into the regimen or not. But yeah. obviously, seems like a poor idea. 
Yeah, you know what? It's not illogical mm. to think that way. I just want to let you know that when I was your age, of course, there wasn't any, finasteride didn't even exist. So I was trying everything, including the kitchen sink. But you yeah. are on what is one of the most, it's, um, it's obviously FDA approved for the, the indication of hair loss, but one of the most effective hair loss medications known to man. So I would absolutely stick it out. How long have you been on it? Um, we got started about 19, so I want to say like two, two years, two and a half years. Okay. And are you noticing okay. that your hair loss is still progressing? Uh, no, yeah, I see a lot of more like baby hairs around the hairline and stuff like that. Uh, it's definitely stopped. That was like the main thing, stopped the, the huge amount of loss that I was seeing. And I seen it like I seen it really, really early, like when I was like grade eight, like alopecia grade eight. Like I wasn't even like puberty wise. So it, I was thinking more like it was like a deep medical like term or a substance or right, but it just never improved. So that's why I was thinking of throwing all this crap in there. Maybe I can get some back. Okay, so I'm confused. So you mm -hmm. were, you were diagnosed with a form of alopecia in the eighth grade, or you thought that yeah, you like a lot of hair loss around the ears and standing around the ears and like the temple. In the eighth grade, so so what did so you went to see a doctor? What did the doctor say was going on? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, like, that's why I'm calling you guys. Really, it was just more like uh, uh, there's not much we can do. Your blood work and check. Uh, and then when I kind of hit 18, 19, that's when I got on the finale. So, so it's possible that your hair loss started, mm. your MPB started with a kind of a retrograde issue, which was around yeah. around your ears uh, and in, in the temporal area, which isn't retrograde, but it was kind of a combination of the both, but both at an early age, which happens. But the fact that you're mm -hmm. 22 years old now, you've been on finasteride since you were 19. And again, we're both not physicians here, but this is all based on our experience and you haven't gotten any worse in the last three years, that's a great sign. That means that the medication is working mm -hmm. for you. What you do not want to yeah. do is fuck with that. You do not want to add anything right now to your regimen. Gotcha, okay. And that's it. And I understand, you know, yeah. you can you could just keep those bottles somewhere so when you're 40 years old, you can look at them and laugh to yourself and say, you know what, these guys saved my ass from taking this shit. Yeah. All right. Well, and then I guess I just got two more questions. I guess what do you guys think about derm rollers? The derma rollers. Uh, I'll I'll tell you what I think. I think that you know there, there's some strong evidence that derma rolling can help. Um, we don't know what the long term use of derma rolling is going to do to your scalp, and if you're going to continue to keep hair in an antigen phase just by derma rolling, but there's mm -hmm. there's been people who have had a lot of positive experience. With it, um, I knew a doctor who suggested it back in, it's got to be 2009, it was the first guy who ever suggested mm -hmm. it. So, yeah, I think it could, def it could definitely help. But, again, unless you have an area that really needs regrowth, whether it's your crown. I haven't seen a lot of really great growth in the hairline with derma rolling, but I have seen some. Um, you know, mm -hmm. anything that you do to yourself could set you into a telogen effluvium. So if you're kind of like good right now on the medication alone and you're just trying to get a little extra hair or, or you have hair greed, don't fuck with it. If you can make your hair look good when you walk out of the house and you can feel comfortable in your own skin, then you're winning right now. Yeah, that's a little far-fetched, but yeah, no, I'm definitely not uh, terrible off, but I'm not as comfortable as I want to be for sure. Well, I mean, Understood. I get that. I get that. And you could always try derma rolling to see if it brings in a little bit of peach fuzz or helps you with your, you know, wherever the loss is a little bit. I mean, but again, you know. Yeah, just around the ears and stuff, because I, I haven't really seen many people have it around there themselves, especially at my age, so. Is it, well, what do you mean by around the ears? Is it above? Or is it like in an arch that follows the shape of the, the top of the ear? Yeah, just like that, and then, like, I would say, like, the sideburn is just ridiculously thinned, and then, like, you could see, like, from, like, me using finasteride, like, it's tried to grow in, but it's just nothing, like, you know, just peach fuzz, really. Sweetly. Yeah. Well, okay, so when you say your sideburn, you're talking, uh, like, literally your sideburn, or are you talking about when it goes up higher into the into the temple region? Because cause the yeah, hair temple itself region, would, would so be... Like, okay. 
Go I'm ahead. sorry, I thought you were going to continue. Yeah, so no, it's like a big, more more like the big arch. It's like, it originally was just like a huge bald spot, and there was like nothing there. And then like with the smash right, it slowly started getting some bits and pieces. So that's why I was kind of asking more germ roller if that's I got it into that area that I could see. Yeah, no, I, I think, well, it depends on how far you want to go, you know, reverse this. But I think that if it's, if it's helped you with those temple regions uh, alone, that, that's, I mean, if it's noticeable to you, that's a huge improvement. Like, that's, that's a big win. Um, but are you trying to return your, your temples to what they were, uh, like what your friends had uh, in, throughout high school? Or are you just trying to uh, kind of stabilize it to where it's in a, a relative adult-shaped hairline type of, type of situation? Yeah, um, honestly, since uh, the grade 9, I've just let it grow out and just threw it in a ponytail. So, like, probably not the smartest idea, so I just kind of, like, cut an inch off every couple months. That's kind of what I've been doing. But I kind of just, with the amount of hair, I kind of, like, hide the sides where there's, like, not enough hair, so you can't really tell. And then I just throw a ball cap on anyways. It's not noticeable to, like, my friend's family and stuff like that, but... Right. Well, here's the thing. You know, you you could also talk to your doctor... And again, I'm I'm not a. It's not that I'm not an advocate of this, but you know, you're getting growth from finasteride, which I think is incredible. And the fact that you've been able to maintain your hair and you grew back some of the sides over the retrograde area. Uh, there are guys who are doing really well on oral minoxidil. You're a young guy, though, and there are potential adverse side effects. So you would really need to speak to a specialist about potentially trying that. And that could get you that extra growth. With that said, it could also send you into a fucking spiral of a shed. So you kind of have to, yeah. So you kind of have to, you know, really weigh that out if you're considering the medication. But given the fact that you're getting new growth in areas that you had no growth, especially on the side of your scalp, it's possible that adding minoxidil, oral minoxidil, low dose could get you over that hump and to the point that, you know, you feel really comfortable. I mean, you can have a lot more hair possibly, but it's real medication. It comes with potential adverse side effects. You're a young guy. Mm -hmm. And if you can maintain the hair that you have right now and feel at least pretty comfortable, then that might be good enough for you without taking any additional sure. Yeah, my my primary uh, care physician, yeah, he turned down minoxidil pretty fast. He said, like, the Nastra is the only thing you didn't even give out at all, so... Kind of shut that down pretty early. All right, brother. Well, listen, let it call us back. Let us know how you're doing. You know, feel free to call and ask any any more questions. Uh, I don't think it's a great idea to add anything else, any of the herbal products that you've purchased, or any of the, you know, the the supplements or nutrients that you've purchased, because a, like I said, you don't really want to mix DHT inhibitors. You know, or five alpha reductase inhibitors, especially you know natural, and you're you know you're on the synthetic, really the again the best drug known to man at this point, besides maybe dutasteride. But this is really the only FDA approved drug for this indication, and you're doing well. I just wouldn't fuck with it. Gotcha. All right, man. Good luck. Thanks for the call. Really Listen. appreciate it, guys. Thank you, guys. You got it. Thanks for calling. Let's take this. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? It's Morty. Brooklyn. Morty, what's up with your phone? How are you? Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm walking down the street and it's freaking, there we go. I had the muffler in front of my face because it's freezing out here. I'm actually walking home. Fucking New York. Oh. First, first of all, I want to congratulate oh. you on, on your inaugural live yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for calling in yesterday. That's pretty good. <laughs> Oh, it was dude, fun. thank you for having me. That was awesome. No, I loved it. It was great. Um, and I, welcome to everyone. Welcome to the main event. If you haven't watched the main event, you've got to watch the main event the next time that Joe does it. What a great name for a great show. I think it's great. I, thank I think, you. I think it's a great name. It's the, the yeah. main event with Joe and Morty. Thank you, Chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, with Joe and Morty. <laughs> Yeah, I was really enjoying that last caller who was talking about the, the you know, the double standards in terms of uh, male and female appearances. And, you know, I, it's funny because I've been seeing a lot about the questions about appearance, especially things like appearance in the workplace. And, you know, why is it that women, for example, paint their lips red or why do they put rouge on their faces? 
And the reasoning is is because when, um, and, and you can see this in lower animals, when, a, when, when an animal is in estrus, in other words, when the woman is fertile. Yeah, they're, 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 so they're, they're, they're rosy. Yeah. They have red lips and they're rosy yeah. cheeks. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that's really what that's about. It's, it's, it's mating. It's a, it's a form of attracting mate. And the same thing goes with guys and hair. Hair is a sign of youth. It's a sign of health. It's a sign of strength. You know, and when we lose it, you know, it creates a different, you know, message that we cannot control because our appearance is our message, right? When we send a message out with our appearance, it's a message we cannot control. Right. And all that we're trying to do is have some control over that message. Um, so, yeah. Well, you know, well said, Morty, and that is the truth. Yeah. You know, and uh, as far as hair goes, I mean, I've been doing uh, – Last probably last five six months, I've been doing karaoke on Wednesday nights, and I gotta tell you, you know, having a little bit of hair on my head, it's giving me the confidence to stand up in front of an audience. I love that and watch a recording. Yeah, nice. yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah, watch a recording of myself. And now, the thing I'm worried about is is that I look a little stiff on stage, and maybe my moves need some work. No, the hair part doesn't even come into the equation. Well, and that's the thing. <laughs> that the, the hair is the hard part, man. The moves are the easy part. You can work on that. <laughs> well, yes, I know. I have to work on it. So, but yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of it. The, the other point about, that Joe makes about adding something that wasn't there before, that's definitely a truism. For me, it's kind of a little of both because I lost my hair when I was in my, in my late 20s. So I hadn't had hair for a good 15 years. Um, so for me, I was getting something that I didn't have, but the other side of the coin is, is if you go back far enough, yeah, I want to, I want to recapture that like 18, 19 years old hair, you know, it's something that was, of course. was missing, you know, and the other point about it is, is like I said before, it's a sign of youth and a sign of strength. And so I can understand that for women, like if a woman has children, for example, and then they get a tummy tuck, I totally get that, you know, and I'll support that as a guy. And, but, you know, and I've played with fake titties, and they're fun. Look, <laughs> look. While, while there's a, a, a definite, a, you know, a definite function to maintaining your teeth, if you lost one front tooth, it would mm-hmm. not affect your ability to eat at all. But you look really fucked teeth, up. I was saying, I, I wasn't saying teeth. I was saying titties. No, no, no. I know that. I know. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking about replacing something. You know, like our hair. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't think a woman would feel uncomfortable or say that it's unnecessary for a guy to replace his front tooth. So why yeah. is it a problem to replace your fucking hair? Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, Morty. Thanks, thanks for the it's feedback. It's a continuation of the questions. It's just just the the same theme. What's wrong with yeah. this? I mean, and, and why why is hair replacement a big deal? Right. Yeah, yeah. And and it's fun. Sometimes you just sometimes you have to put a front and center. My friend, uh, my good friend Kristen, you know, when I got it done, like for a little while, she, you know, while it was going through the the ugly duckling stage, she didn't understand. And when stuff started coming in, she's like, "Oh wow," you know. And then when I had mm-hmm. my second procedure in December, shaved it down again. I said, "So here I am shaved again. What do you prefer?" Shaved or not shaved? And she's like, "Lord, just your hair back." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> well, that answers that question." Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's, much. it's really important. You know, now the the one thing that is really important is that you want to make sure you don't fuck yourself up. So, you know, and this is the problem whenever you get things done, right? I mean, I was talking on Thursday about my donor, and that's kind of what we're talking about: donor versus versus hairline. Mm-hmm. And I told Joe, I said, this is, after the second one, you know, in certain light, my donor looks a little see-through. I'm hoping that that changes over time. But if it doesn't, I'm basically done as far as I'm concerned. Um, Mm -hmm. So donor is important, but what's more important is the hairline for sure because that's what people are looking at. So, Well, first of all, when you're you're on the main event, you're a thin donor. I'm going to let you out. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, we get cut off. No, you can work with a thin donor. You you can you can get a shorter haircut and kind of blend things in. I mean, obviously there's mm-hmm. limits to that, but you can't yeah. blend a bad hairline. 
Like it's yeah. it's front and center. The the only way you can uh, hide it is is with a um, uh, a hairstyle like like a Caesar cut hairstyle. And interestingly yeah, enough, I had someone yeah. ask me. Yeah, I I had someone ask me about uh, Mike Thurston, the um, the the YouTube guy, uh, if I could evaluate his hair transplant because he 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 you know million views on his on his video where he's talking about having a hair transplant. He went to Turkey, I think. I'm not made, paid much attention because you can't see the hairline. He's always got it brushed mm. forward. But what I noticed, and I was glancing at it just the other day, the thumbnail for his video, is there was a very mm -hmm. distinct ridge across uh, the the back of the frontal third in his yeah. Caesar uh, Caesar hairstyle, and and it it mm. raises up, and I realized mm -hmm. that it's probably because the angles are more vertical, and he's he's having to bring it forward and use a bunch of product to keep it in place. You never see his hairline, mm -hmm. but that's another indicator that it's it, it's just not done very well because the angles are vertical as opposed to flatter to the scalp. Oh boy! Yeah. Huh. So. Now, interesting. Yeah, but yeah, mm -hmm. you you can work with a thin donor. You can't work with a with a bad hairline. That's that's the whole that's the whole point of that issue. But Bonnie, mm -hmm. I think you're right, and I'm glad that you were able to to recognize that, and there's a lot of guys that can't, like uh, I think he saw the image that we put on screen a couple of weeks ago from, uh, what was the doctor name that, that sent this, that to you, Joe? Bevin? Uh, yeah, Bevin, yeah. boy rule. He's a dermatologist yeah. from yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And, you know, this guy was satisfied. He, he, was, he wanted more hair, even though his donor was completely depleted to the point yeah. where it, I mean, First of all, he has to keep it extremely short, but if he and it, 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 there's no way he can grow that out. And mm -hmm. like uh, Killian said the other day, and this is something that no one really recognizes, there is a, a interesting kind of reflective property when light hits the scalp when you have mm -hmm. you know these thousands of punct punctate wounds on the back of your mm -hmm. head. And if you don't have enough hair to cover that shine, that light, it does give an, an mm -hmm. illusion of even um, less coverage. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a very real phenomenon. So the fact that you recognize this at, at this point and that you're like, look, mm -hmm. this is it. I can't get any more done. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's really important because you're going to be unhappy. I believe, obviously, yeah. the front is the most important and the hairline and mid-interior scalp and that frames your face. But... Mm -hmm. You don't want to have a fucked up donor, yeah. man. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. It, it, it's one of those things that I noticed that when, when, like, I hit the back of my head with a flash, then you can really, like, see the, the thinness. But, you know, the other side of it is, is, is when ha having multiple procedures, I think, I'm thinking about it like playing Russian roulette, right? So you've got, you've got mm -hmm. your barrel, you got the six ball, and you got a, you got a bullet in one of the chambers. You know, it's only, the six piles, there's only one bullet, bad bullet in the chamber. Right? You pull the first one. Boom. Got your hair transplant. You survived it. Looks good. Now what are you going to do? You're going to pull it again. Well, you're going to pull right. it again, but now you're pulling it with, with yep. two bullets in the barrel. Yep, that's right. <laughs> and then you have a third, you're pulling with three bullets in the barrel. Exactly. You know. But, you so know so. It's, not, it's not just that the bullet's getting closer to the chamber. It's that you're adding more fucking bullets. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> that's even scarier. <laughs> well, that's true. So, all right brother morty yeah. always a pleasure mm -hmm. i look forward to the main event every thursday at what time joe <laughs> put him on uh, the spot it's not, it's not set it. up it's not set up yet <laughs> okay <laughs> don't know yet and that's m-a-n-e get it get it guys <laughs> yeah. all right buddy the line, like the line Thanks, Jack, you gotta do, you gotta get, yeah you gotta get uh what's her name um uh uh peterson's daughter because she's got the lion's the lion's mane or whatever it is, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, Michaela. Uh, yeah. Michaela, you, you got to get her on on this on the show. You too, Spencer. You got to get her on the show. Funny. I don't, um, I, I, I don't want to do anything. Rather get her dad on. Well, yeah. I was going to say you're reading you're reading one of one of uh, uh, one of uh, Jordan's favorite books. <laughs> he mentioned that on Thursday. Yeah, I was like, I know. Oh, he's reading. <laughs> he's he's yeah, reading. It's, it's a heavy read too. Oh, okay. We need to talk about Jordan's hair transplant. Yeah, well, that's, actually, that's why we I do. want to get him on and ask him. Yeah, well, I, I, have I was going to say he, he's 
been he, he's been very coy about that. Like he he's got this whole story about how he had lost some hair and then he got on this meat only diet and then the hair came back. Yeah. But looking at that hairline, man, I'm sorry, no. That's not. That's a. That's no. a load of crap. Well, I would say that's my I mean, my, esti- my estimation that for a while uh, he had a, a very obvious, you know, like j- just a a really not well designed hairline just for a short period of time, and then it looked mm-hmm. like it, it appeared to get a little bit better. I don't know if some of the hair was miniaturized or he had things refined, and then mm-hmm. I noticed some significant miniaturization all around when he was ill, and it does seem yep. like he's recouped some hair. And he has a much more yep. natural appearance right now. He does. You know, the other thing is, is that he's got to he's got to get somebody to talk to him about his wardrobe because my God, <laughs> he's doing well, this like Joker thing. <laughs> dude, dude, that's him, and he's, yeah, dude, that that's you yeah. know that's, yep. that that that's how he does. That's how he do. Not yeah, everyone could be you, Morty. Oh, I, I couldn't get away with wearing that, let me tell you. But I love the guy. Anyway, listen, have a good night, guys. Bye, I'm going to keep on listening. Take care. Take me. Thank you so much. 888 I just found jeans from Amazon Essentials <laughs> that look incredible, and they're like 20 bucks. So I, I show this outfit. You got you to gotta get them. I show this outfit. I got them. I show this outfit someone I'm very close to, they think it's yeah. like I'm wearing a pair of A, what are they, AGs and, you know, like maybe a shirt from, I don't know, uh, not Ralph Lauren, but whatever. It was the Oxford shirt. Shirt, mm. shirt <clears throat> was from Amazon Essentials too. I'm like, this entire outfit really? cost me 40 bucks, yo. <laughs> He's getting old. <laughs> and nobody knows. <laughs> now they know because they're talking about it. Pretty soon he's going to be talking about the value of the blue plate special. Dude, <laughs> let me tell you something about getting a little older. You, I give zero fucks. Zero fucks. <laughs> oh, it all as starts. long as your ass still looks good in jeans after 40, you win. See you all win. these guys in line at the, at the grocery store? I'm like, hasn't, don't these people just, they, no one squats anymore, does any exercise? No, they don't. It's that's, unbelievable. That's a problem. No one exercises anymore. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? It's, uh, it's me in the air, Jose. Jose, what's happening, man? What's hey, up, man? Um, hey, I just want to call real quick to uh, talk about, you know, the title of the of the show today is uh, What's Better, a Good Hairline, or What's More Important, a Donor Area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Coincidentally, I was talking to Killian yesterday because we have become friends throughout the years over mm-hmm. the problem with hair loss. And uh, he's obsessed okay. with, with FUT versus FUE. And um, I just today I cut my own hair. And I have a huge scar in the back. And it's a really good scar, actually. But it's long. And it's all across the back from two procedures from mm-hmm. 20 years ago. And then I also got a procedure maybe like two, three years ago. And uh, I think the extraction is above average. It's, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the thing is, a lot of people now know that I have gotten a hair transplant. And everybody's own saying on the linear scar. Nobody mm-hmm. notices the, the donor area of the FUE. And that's actually a very good point. It. It, it, mm-hmm. I notice it because I know what I'm looking for. But to the untrained eye, everybody's like, oh, your hair looks great. Oh, but I don't want that scar in the back. Yeah. And they bypass mm-hmm. the fact that I have an FUE extraction around that other bigger scar. Yeah. But, and I can, I mean, I wish you could, I could show you pictures. The scar is actually super good compared to other people, right? But yeah. it's still a scar. Sure. And the, the whole mm-hmm. back of my head looks altered, looks... Um, Obviously, it looks touched, but well, it doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, well, what I was going to say is you said you had two transplants how many years ago? Two FUTs? Uh, about 18 years ago. Okay. A year apart. Yeah. Well, and here, that scar. Go ahead. I'm yeah. Sorry. And here's the, here's the thing. Um, I, I guess we have some sort of overlap, so don't worry about it. Um, here, here's the thing. There's something to be said about what you're saying right now because we are all trained to understand, and society understands what that scar is now. 
They all know that you had a hair transplant. So yes, you're absolutely right about that. And the mm -hmm. mothian effect may not be as apparent to people in their minds yet that that was a hair transplant as well if someone is over harvested. So that's very true. But as you know, the upside to the way that you had it done was you had a lot of fucking hair moved and your hair probably looks great. And you would never have been able to have that much hair moved if you did 100% FUE. I totally agree. And that's one point that I made to him saying, but I'm not over harvested. Right. And I only had about, yeah. I think it's 2,300 grafts extracted from the back. Yeah. And it was spread throughout. Do I have room for another uh, FUE uh, extraction? Maybe if I go to a good doctor and he's conscientious about my my appearance in the donor area, he might, you know, get a get a decent amount of grafts out of the back. But obviously, if you go mm -hmm. to a hair mill and get five thousand grafts moved at one time in a square block, obviously, then we wouldn't be talking about what we're talking about. Right. But right. It, it just uh, the, the point that I wanted to make is the disruption of the linear scar and that is a great great scar in the eyes of other people is a, a big no oh i don't want your hair i just don't want that line i yes. rather go for for you know mm -hmm. when they could just get the follicular unit and they're bypassing the fact that i have those expressions too so honestly i think in hair the customer is always right as long as he's happy at the end, the customer's always right because if he's happy, it doesn't matter if me, you, and you know Joe Tillman, that is a, a, an expert in the subject, can see the obvious extraction. He's happy, and the people around him are also oblivious. Before Joe disagrees with you, because I see that he really wants to, I, I'm going to tell. I'm going <laughs> to say this. I agree with you in the sense that. I think that the, as long as the consumer is informed and is able to informed, make a truly yeah. informed decision, then yes, if he's willing to sacrifice overall density, if he's willing to sacrifice some really valuable graphs that can be moved and understands the entire scope and the possible pitfalls of just doing 100% FUE, but is willing to go that route because they want to avoid the linear scar, then I agree with you 100%. My problem lies mm -hmm. in the fact that most consumers don't get all the information they need to make an educated decision. And you're right. And I, uh, before I go, I actually, I've had people that have asked me to refer to my doctor, which I don't like doing because, you know, first of all, I'm going to pay for it. Two, you can only go wrong, and they're never going to remember the guy that gave him a great uh, referral. They always remember the guy that the referral. That's right. Bad. That fucked him up. So right. So, exactly. But I can tell. I Smart. can tell you straight up. There's people that call me and send me their pictures after they went to my doctor, and they're like, "Oh, I'm I'm not happy." And I look at great hair, even like high definition. I'm like, dude, you just took a picture, ten yard. I mean, ten. Uh, 10 inches away from your hairline and you're like dissecting mm -hmm. every single hair, obviously you're going to find flaws. You see that good hair transplant? I still mm -hmm. think that it's an above average transplant. But that person is not happy, so what do we do? Joe? Well, it, it depends on what they're unhappy about. Like if, if, they, if they're taking a, a, pic, a picture 10 inches away from their hairline, what is it they're trying to uh, inspect or dissect visually? Well, it's, you know that most of us agree, most of us agree that most times there's a second procedure that is going to be needed to, to find perfection. The first procedure will bring you transformation, and a second, mm -hmm. third, fourth, fifth procedure will bring you closer to the ideal hair, right? So they, they get their hair, and I always tell them before they get their procedure, are you open to the possibility that you may need a second or third? No, no, no. This is all I want. Then they get it. Mm -hmm. And then they want more. They say, oh, but the yeah. density is not right. Yeah, but, you know, as I told you, you might need a second procedure. I, know, I never say you don't or you do need because I'm not an expert and I'm not a doctor. I, I don't need to mm -hmm. sell my hair transplant, but I always warn them that they will, they will need or they might need more than one. And then, surprise, surprise, after the first procedure, 
some people are like, oh, it's, this is thin. Yeah. I've never you, known anybody. Yeah. I've never known anybody who didn't have more than one hair transplant. Who's called at least called right. this program or in my personal life ever? Exactly. Exactly. Maybe anyway, Joe, guys, maybe Joe sorry, has. Oh. I don't know. Go ahead. Well, l l let me. L um, <clears throat> one one hair transplant. Um, I have to think about that. But l let me just address what what you're talking about with um, if the patient is happy, that's all that matters. I think that in like Spencer said, there there are situations where I too agree with you on that, but. There, there's two problems. Number one, um, in my experience, more now than ever, patients don't know what will make them happy. They think they sure. want one thing, and it's based on reading forums. It's based on reading Reddit. Uh, it's based on, you know, um, Turkey Instagram, you know, clinics in Turkey and their their Instagram feeds. Um, and they may they may get the what they think will make them happy, and they are happy for a while, until they realize what is this on my head, and then they're not happy. And all the people that told them that that was a bad idea to begin with, now they're looking pretty smart. And <laughs> when you when you when you made that statement, I've heard that before. I've heard that from consultants from other clinics, and I'm not talking about today, I'm talking about back in the day when there's like a small pool of truly world-class clinics. And it was actually a consultant for this yeah. clinic that said that. The patient knows what they want. And I said then, just like I say now, no, not really. Not, not every time. True. Not most of the time, actually. They have to have not that education to understand why, you know, this is a bad idea or why, why that's a bad idea. But the, the way that I look at this is, is if a patient comes to me or, or a doctor, you know, me to talk about it or to a doctor to, to do it, and as long as it doesn't look like they had surgery, then fine. That's when I, I think, sure, if they're happy with it, then that's great because I think it's incumbent upon ethical doctors to not put an, a, a patient in a position where five years from now, they're going to be like, what the hell did I put on my head? That, that was a decision I made when I was too young because I wanted what I just lost. I wanted the hairline that I had a year before that's now gone. Now I'm five years older. I'm losing more hair. I, I realize what a more mature hairline is supposed to look like. I look like an idiot. Or I've got people <laughs> looking at my hairline and, and not saying anything, but, but they're, instead of looking me in the eye when I talk to them, they're looking at my hairline. That's why I think that that's not, uh, I, I don't think that's a true statement, that patients know what they want. They think they know what they want. And a lot of times they do yeah. know what they want. But, but it's, if the doctor looks at it and, and they have a good aesthetic sense on what looks natural and they see that what the patient wants uh, and says they'll be happy with isn't something that would actually look normal out in the street, then they shouldn't do it because they're setting, they're setting that patient up for, for uh, they're either setting the patient up for disappointment and, and a lot of problems um, or they're, well, and, and what they wind up doing is they, they're pushing that patient off to someone that will say yes because that's what, that's what almost always happens. Dr. A says no because he doesn't want to do it for whatever reason. Dr. B said, sure, no problem, and they wind up having it done anyway. I've seen that more times than I can count. So I understand what you're saying. I agree with you in some situations, but in a lot more situations, that's not the way to do it. Yeah, and I, I hate opinion. to sound so anecdotal. Uh, I, I hate to sound so anecdotal, and that might have been like a general statement. Sure, I'm raising my hand. The absolute, the absolute values of... Oh, uh, so, of <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, Spencer has something to say. Sorry. Thank oh, you, ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Spencer. I have to raise my hand now to be called on on my own fucking show, by the way, people. <laughs> <laughs> There's a doctor who we both ended up removing from, you know, our respective, you know, groups. Uh, this is a guy who was with the I IHS for about 20 years. Did a lot of good work in his yeah. day for a very long time. And 
he decided to do a hair transplant on a YouTuber who really wanted to try to do a hair transplant without any anesthesia. He oh, wanted yeah. to attempt to meditate through his hair transplant. And this physician agreed, at least for part of the hair transplant, to allow this guy to do this. On camera. And on camera. Wow. And we had to kick his ass out. Of, I had to kick him out of the IHRS, and Joe had to kick him out of his, his hair transplant mentor, best doctors in the universe group. I lost my shit when I saw this. Yeah. Of course. I flipped, I flipped the F out. <laughs> because yeah, the patient was happy. But that was the wrong way to wrong thing to do. Yeah. He, in my happy view. until he may have gone to shock at some point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. how is that even remotely reasonable? And then this particular doctor tries to tell me how there are people who are able to control their their heart rates and their th pain threshold and you know this is people have been meditating for thousands of years and there there is non-anesthetic you know procedures being performed all over the world and i'm like yeah this isn't the fucking civil war doc <laughs> you know you're right yeah not to Jesus mention it, it, christ it, it, go ahead he he had no idea that the patient wanted to do this until the morning of the surgery yeah when he's wow. like, sure, okay, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Good camera's exactly. rolling, yeah, yeah. let's do yeah. it. And yeah, obviously, exactly. those, are, those are extreme cases. And that's what I said. Like, uh, when we talk about absolute values of the customer, as long as the customer is happy, because when you turn it around, and there's customers that will never be happy, even with good work. We know patients. we've been, patients. been patients, a patient for customer. over 18 years, yeah. and you guys have been in the field longer than some of your listeners have been alive. We know that Jesus. there's people <laughs> that are not gonna be happy with a good transplant because maybe they never found out what a good transplant could do and couldn't do. Right. So uh, the opposite is, is true as well. Yeah, he may not have the best transplant in the world, but he's happy because there was an improvement over what he had. And, and then we can debate yeah, okay, whether- and, and I agree with that, whether, and that's why I, I hate to see people critiquing hair transplants online, like on these message forums, because a lot of these people who sign off on their images with these physicians, they're happy. They're ha they, yeah. they, they moved on with their life and they feel good about themselves. And then some I fucking did. schmuck from the peanut gallery, some anonymous motherfucker <laughs> is critiquing mm -hmm. this guy's hair transplant yeah. because maybe he likes or, dis or d dislikes his particular physician, or maybe it's the competitor of this physician. Correct. Mm -hmm. Fucking ridiculous, man. Sometimes ignorance is All right. bliss. All Thanks, right, brother. Guys, I really have to go. Uh, I took a break from work to talk to you. Awesome show. Well, we Always. have to go we too, appreciate okay? It. That was a great <laughs> Thank call. You. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Awesome. Thank you, man. Take care. I'm not going to raise my hand or ask a Good question. Show. Um, <laughs> the guy's just uh, hung up. All right, guys, we'll call it a night. So, so this is what I'll Thanks do. For so for anytime it, I want to speak, I'll go like this. That'll be your signal. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then two seconds later, I hear it. Yeah, for you not Actually, to get frustrated. Actually, the, the, the delay's pretty good now. For you not to fucking now. lose your shit on the air every time I need to say something. I'm just going <laughs> to... I'll get, I'll get like some sort of a clicker. Yeah. All right, guys, listen, I, I want to thank you all for tuning in. It was a great show. Thank you for all of your questions, and I'm glad that we were able to, to do – I'm glad that we are able to do this every week to, to answer your questions. Follow me, just me, by the way. Follow me at <laughs> Spencer Cobra on Instagram. Joe, what's your Instagram again? Joe Tillman Official. Joe Tillman Official, at Joe Tillman Official. Guys who are listening to this broadcast – Check out Joe Tillman's YouTube channel, which is the Hair Transplant channel. That's Hair Transplant. That's YouTube.com. Sorry. YouTube.com forward slash Hair Transplant Mentor. Like the program. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Until next time, be strong. God bless. And thank you so much for listening. Have a good night. Thank you very night. much. I'm sorry for any inconvenience you may have been put to prior to the program. 
and I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you could now leave by the exits at the rear, that'd be splendid. Thank you. Good night.